Yes. So I'll call it to order. We need a rope. Right. Here. Sharon Kelly. Here. Tracy LeBlanc. Here. Doug Rowdy. Here. Pamela Garvey. Here. And Justin Wood. Here. All members are present today. All, right. All right, number three, approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve. Tracy, is there a second? I'll second. Anybody see any changes or anything? If hearing none, all those that are in favor say aye. Aye. I'm opposed the same. Okay. Approval of the minutes that are in our packet from the September 3rd meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. I'll second. Second it. Okay. Uh, did anybody see any changes or anything? If not, all those in favor that say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Public comment. We have. Are you here for public comment, sir? I'm just here to visually experience what goes on. Okay. All right. So we didn't have anybody upstairs. We do not have any other supervisor here also. So four or five it goes. So now we can decide on which ones we can catch up on for the next half hour. Public hearings. Uh, should we do yours, Eric? Number nine. We we can do that. Yep. Let's let's there's, do that one. There are plenty of time for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's, let's do number nine. Unless you want to sneak the budget in quick so they can all go. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much since you uh, wanted to get right on this, tells me that you're not all voted out and we got another election here and passed another ballot. Yes. So um, this item of business pertains to nominations for the Land and Water Conservation Board uh, at the state level. So there are three seats available on that state land and water conservation board. So we have the opportunity to submit a ballot for three of the five candidates on the on the ballot that I put together. I understand that that you were able to go through the bios and watch the videos. I appreciate that. That's that's very helpful. So now what I'd like for you to do um, is we can have a discussion if you want. You can ask me questions. I have some experience with these folks, some of these folks anyway. Um, but I'd like you to go through and make your selections. We have one vote to cast. So once we, once all of you uh, make your selections, I'll receive those ballots. Um, I'll include mine and then tally them up. And for those that have the most uh, votes out of this group, I will cast one one official ballot um, to the state. So I do that online. So they've got a site that I'll go to. In the past, we've had a vote for LCC members and a vote for Land Conservation Department staff. They've switched that now. So each county has just one one vote to cast for three of these candidates. Does that make sense? Okay. Kind of. So you're so down here you have vote for a total of three candidates. Yep. So when you cast your ballot, are you just voting for one person? No. No. You're I'm, voting for three. I'm voting for three, but we can only do that once, I'm trying to say. Yep. Whereas before uh, land conservation committee members could vote once for their three and the staff members could vote once for their three. Now it's been combined and we cast one vote for the three select. So should we just rank them one, two, three? That's what I did. Who I thought first, second, third. So I just did not yep. if that makes that sense. Fine. Yep. We have three uh, individuals that hold seats on the land, land conservation board. Uh, Rebecca Clark, Yogesh Chala, and Monty Osterman are current, uh, currently sitting on that conservation board. Um, Mike Hofberger is on the Land Plus Water Board of Directors. 
uh, an outstanding individual, very engaged. Um, and Terry White uh, is fairly new, but fairly involved in all things natural resources, has a lot of involvement with uh, Great Lakes committees, things like that, but fairly new to this uh, process and this, uh, this board nomination, so. Any other questions? Did all get the bios and read it or look at it? Yeah, I think you passed them out. Yep. Yeah, I, I did pass out a, a booklet of the, the bios that they submitted in text. Um, there may be time to, and I think Claire may have it at the ready if you wanted to watch some of the videos. They're short, but uh, that's up to you all. If we have to. Bless everybody. I'm ready to hand mine. Oh. Three of us. I'm done. I'm ready. Oh, okay. There's two more. Okay. Well, that was easy. No <laughs> <Not real> bad. <laughs> yep. Someone prepared it. I will tally these up and then uh, after the meeting, cast that vote. Okay. All right. Thank awesome. You. All right. Let the five minutes. No. <laughs> do we want to do 10? We ought to do the budget stuff. We can do 10, 11, and 12 for you. 10, 11, and 12? Right. 10, 11 are pretty much the same thing. These are on all, all the, uh, are on the agendas uh, due to the fact that we're, our final approval for the budget is next Tuesday at the county board. Uh, these are on, the committee schedules. Um, if there was anything else outstanding or technical amendments that a committee wanted to add that was not in the budget presently. So we are working diligently with our bond council on moving forward with how to do our bonding. And that that'll be part of that will be in discussion at general government tomorrow, um, along with our standard budget resolution coming through with that. So unless there's anything else coming forth on the budget, we are still solid with the budget as a balanced budget moving forward. So, Sarah, what are we looking for? You want double the money or anything, or do you change anything? Budget as presented is exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> oh, you were well trained. You were so well trained. <laughs> 24 years later, I finally know what to say. <laughs> you were really ready for that one. Yeah, and then, Mr. Chair, on my administrator's report, a um, couple of point, uh, things coming forward would be um, at the county board, we're putting together the library committee. That committee is set, uh, set up by the administrator every five years to establish a new five-year plan for the Library Federation. So I'll, I'll have those appointments Tuesday night for that, and uh, Supervisor Duncanson is the chair of that committee um, with that. Okay. So working on that. Now I will have an appointment uh, for that is statutorily in there that we haven't done in the past. I couldn't tell you why as an administrative form of government is appointing someone to be the parks. Parks general manager. Parks Park. general manager. Park system. System managers. General. Which is a term that is set in statute that we have to just assign that. Um, I have to appoint someone to be that person. So. So how does that work in payroll and stuff with the new? Do we have a job description and all the other no bells need. and whistles that go with the description? The duties remain the same. It's all duties right. remain the same and pay remains the same. It's, it's just a, a heading, a title. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and that's my report. All right. Thank you all for your work on the budget. Appreciate that. God, that was too easy for them. Nobody brought their budget, but oh. Oh, and I'm sure it's yeah, full of yellow. Got a new one these, so oh, and I got to start yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the third one. <laughs> or, no, I'm good. Kim's going to need another new highlighter. Uh huh. Yeah. I had to get a new one. We're out. I was supposed to know. Oh. Oh. All right. So, does anybody else have anything on that we on the budget? Otherwise, we're good to go on that then. So there might not be any surprises on Tuesday. Their work plan they showed us. Which would be good, huh? It's actually handled in. 
All right. Uh, what do we got? Well, we got all kinds of time. Well, I can certainly go through the division um, yes. if that works. Um, oh, and do you, do you wanna just... um, yeah, actually, let's let Eric start the division update with the votes for the. OK, so just so you're aware, I, I tallied these up. And so we'll cast a vote for Rebecca Clark, Mike Hoffberger and Monty Osterman. OK. Sounds good. Um, uh, Timmy Anderson uh, presented um, some information on the outdoor rec plan to the Public Safety Public Works Committee yesterday. Um, that committee did set the public hearing for that plan for 5 p.m. on December 3rd. So that's um, coming forward. Um, the, the latest is they're, they're working with Claire to add that um, in the latest news to the county's homepage. So that plan will be available between now and the 3rd of December. The public can review that plan and provide comments directly on that item. Um, also, the bike and ped plan is taking um, starting to take off. They are forming the um, advisory committee and that they will have a kickoff meeting later here in November to get that plan started. It will be about a one year process as well as we're wrapping up that outdoor um, rec plan that has also been about a year process. So those are two things um, from the planning side. We did get confirmation that we were awarded our ortho imagery um, grant money, as you know, in the budget is the match for the, the three inch. And so um, we are awarded the other half of that. That was good news. And um, we are catching up on our um, outstanding um, properties that we've been kind of behind on getting in the, into the tax roll. Uh, we were behind an hour. I think we're up to like October 4th. So we're just within the last four weeks here. So our property listing is getting all caught up in that area. Um, and we are just kind of gearing up for our ordinance rewrite season as we'll have some language discussions today. Um, today's kind of just high level, give you guys some additional information and we kind of launch into that here, December, January and February, kind of more of the heavy lifting. So yeah, this is kind of the calm before the storm, it seems. Any questions for me? So the ortho, are we good? When are we gonna get that? We should we paid three years ago or four for it. Now we're still sitting here. They said two years. Now it's three. Yeah, the recent deliverables we've gotten. You've got the recent ones. Okay. Yeah. Are they updated to Beacon so we have lot yes. line numbers and stuff? Yes. Really? Good. Yeah. Can he come and show us how to do it once? Can he? Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Show us how to Brad will love some of that because those to do that. Those layers on the side don't seem to work well on some. And every county is different. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a mess, but beacon is just different. Yeah, beacon in different. general. But yeah. you got to really bounce around in it oh, to yeah. find stuff. Yeah. yeah, we have. Hope we, is way better than most because you can get on the report and get to the sewers and stuff and land use permits. Where the other ones you have to go through. Yeah. Three more. It's years. not forgiving. Our G no to draw in and stuff. No. Yeah. Our GIS coordinator has spent a lot of time trying to. Um, update and at least make it as usable as as we can. We have received a fair amount of complaints on the system with regard to WebGuide. Um, as you know or are aware of, we didn't have a choice in the change. Um, WebGuide um, sold to Beacon and we were kind of forced to make the change as were all the counties forced to make the change. So um, we're doing our best to be, be diligent and, and update what we can. Brad has spent a lot of time, but I will ask for him to come in and, and give kind of a a quick tutorial on how to use it. Just how to use because the one on the online and beacons is terrible to try to understand it because you can, you can't split screen it because then it covers everything if you go on to something. Oh, so if yeah, you do the report, it covers the whole page. You don't even know what you're looking at. Yeah, yeah. 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 go back to the then map. you got to try to move. Yeah, well, yeah. then you print it. Yeah, then you print it. Yeah. <laughs> you print it. yeah. <laughs> I think the positive, real positive takeaway is that you all are using it. So that's wonderful to know. Trying. Yeah. trying. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> uh, and we'll give kind of a, a tutorial on, on if there's any questions and we can that. figure that out. The parcels, are they going to get nailed oh. for $35 a piece to them? The ones that they're keeping up on? Yeah. You want me to ask? You go ahead. You ask. Okay, well, with that $35 recycling fee or four months behind or three, 
be one of those properties that are going to get nailed for 35? Is that, can we have Amanda in here to explain how that works too then? Uh, there'll be a resolution. Uh, the general government committee uh, tomorrow tomorrow was amended to add a, another resolution in there to look at that. Uh, Before it goes forward? Yes. Okay. So to clarify, <clears throat> to clarify how it's going to gonna work to charge. To look at that. Um, there, you'll see the resolution as, as it's set up to be. Look at it as a uh, pilot program to see how it affects all the properties in that. So and I don't want to get too much into this committee because it's yeah, cause it's not, yeah, not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. Yeah. But if we come to change that point well, that we want to know because we're we're dealing with parcels. <laughs> so it, it, it yeah. winds, does it not? <laughs> That's a thin ice look there, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Just yeah, so. Kim, stop <laughs> stirring the pot. <laughs> when you need answers, you just ask the question. Whatever yeah. happens, happens. You're stirring. Okay. Stop. <laughs> All right. What about eight? Can we do eight? Ordinance link. Logan probably could. Yeah, it's more of a general start to it all, so I can I think I can probably do that. Um, I have a couple pieces though. Uh, so this the model or the most updated model ordinance from the DNR for shoreland zoning. Um, oh, and as far as the our ordinance, um, yeah, aligning with the areas that we have to be and other areas that we are able to um, have some variance from, or there's options. So uh, I have that. For you, and then I also have a pack that I went through and looked at our ordinance and certain areas that we can discuss. Um, so I guess now is to give you guys some information on to get started. What, yeah, here. what areas to familiarize yourself with? Don't I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. Claire could pull it up. I think I have it in there. <clears throat> as you'll see on this document, there's uh, I went through. So right now our ordinance has, when Muni code put everything together, it put all the definitions at the top and then that is kind of covering shoreland general. So there's some areas with these definitions that may be problematic that are supposed to just be or in the model ordinance, they're intended for just shoreland, but then we may have our general definition at the start, but we don't have what they have in the model ordinance or what they're- The specifics thinking. of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so that's some of the definitions here. Um, as we talked earlier this year about like the retaining wall definition, um, we have had um, some problems occur with that again. Um, there's a pending appeal on a decision. Um, the DNR has been contacted by this um, appellant. So that, and that, as far as the DNR, that may be an area with where the definition sh would not be or shouldn't be in there per the, what the model ordinance is um, intending on that. As far as that single boulder stating that it's no, then it's no longer a retaining wall in that case um, in reference to what an accessory structure is defined as in the model ordinance. Um, so we'll dig into that. Um, I've had some meetings with the DNR on that, but um, and then there's some other like the viewing and access corridor there. Um, when I read it, it seems like it'd be just easier to have their definition. It makes sense to me. And then that way there's not little discrepancies between the two the two ordinances or the model and what we have okay. um, i think there is some leeway in that um, as long as the intent and purpose is still served but to me if it makes sense to us what's in the model ordinance i think we should just have that in there and then we're covered on that side of things 
Um, from a definition standpoint, just two things that have or that I noticed the transient lodge was never changed. So that definition, um, I didn't pull it all the complete definition in there, but that still states the May through September and that that language that we changed in the tourist rooming houses, but it just didn't get changed for this definition. So that's just a, um, something that was oversighted on the last ordinance revision and then bunkhouse you'll see lower. Um, I highlighted it just there's been discussions here and there people questioning the size, you know, up to a thousand square feet and us possibly being um, too large on that compared to other counties. And so that's something that I would like to discuss with you guys just to, and I'll have more information on specifics of what other people have, what we're possibly looking at, I would say at the next meeting. Um, but I just wanted to give it to you guys to, if you guys wanted to have any um, research into that as well. Um, <clears throat> setbacks, this is one I just threw in there. Um, so for a town road, we do have the option of a town um, reduced road setback approval. And if it gets approved, they don't have to go through the variance. But for like the county highway or Wisconsin DOT, um, as it's currently at, and I, I'm not completely sure if this can go the same route as a town if, it, if it's um, requested, but currently they would have to, even if the DOT or a county would say we're fine with that location, even though it's not meeting the setbacks, it's not in the right of way, it's closer, they would have to go through the variance at the BOA, which is fine to keep it that way. Um, but I just wanted to bring up the conversation because sometimes it's, you know, a very small difference in what our setback is and there's no issues, but it would still have to go through the variance process. Um, but that would be something that probably have to look at a little the town ones we went through pretty hard because the towns didn't want to do it but that's that was for the legally have to yeah. what we found out I, I might have some of that stuff yet yeah because the private road is the ones that the private we're doing and they don't have to do that anymore. yeah so those go to a variance and in that case there's really nobody <clears throat> to oversee that besides the variance process yeah but and I, like i said i don't know completely i we'd, i'd have to dig into the legality of it if it can only be a variance to our ordinance or if there's the option to have um if dot says we have no issues with this if it's something that then we can issue an administrative permit for that or oh, not. okay just to avoid the variance process for some of these situations that Obviously, there's different scenarios for everything. Yeah, for all some of them are five feet closer than our setback, and the county maybe has no issues, or DOT has no issues, but it still is a variance to the ordinance setback. Um, and then to just generalize the rest of this, so I have boat houses. Um, we just to look at a maximum size if that wants to be looked at at all. Um, I will pull into other counties and check in, you know, kind of what's consistent or seems to be consistent with the state. It seems like most people are utilizing that maximum dimension, um, which is a pretty big building down by the water. Um, so I have a reference to where these sections are in the model ordinance for all of the following below. So if you could scroll down there. So like in the model ordinance, it says, it must be a flat roof. And in our ordinance, it got put into where the roof must be pitched away from the lake. Um, that's been taken to where as long they're they're putting pitched, you know, roofs on because it's not going towards the lake, it's going, you know, parallel to the lake. So I think it'd be easier just to put the flat roof in there from the model ordinance. So then it's we don't have people trying to, you know, dance around with what our language says compared to sure. the, the state model ordinance. Um, we've also had some issues on excessive slopes for boathouses. So that was another thing that I wanted to look at. Um, you can't prevent boathouses um, per state um, law, but you can have areas of your ordinance that prohibit like a structure being on over a 
X amount of slope, which then would be enforceable on a boathouse if somebody wants it on a 40% slope, which is major concerns, as you would know, on a lake. And then the next thing is, is once the boathouse is there, now you need retaining walls because you just dug a hole in a 40% slope and a retaining wall would need to be 75 feet. So it's just kind of a snowball effect by having these boathouses on these steep slopes. Um, and bunkhouse, like I mentioned earlier, the size of that, we'll look into that, um, have some discussion on that. Um, then the rest of these touch on areas in the model ordinance. If you could go up just a little bit, you'll see in here the reduced setback averaging. Um, our language isn't exactly as it reads in the model ordinance, so it kind of left a little bit of area there um, for interpretation. But I feel like the model ordinance definition is um, clearly states that it's for new principal structures. It's not intended for additions to existing non-conforming structures um, and increased shoreland setback. Ours was pretty consistent with the language in the model, but there was, I think, one bullet point missing on that. And those are, I think the increased is a optional to have in there. Um, the reduced is required, I believe, and there's the option of a one-sided setback as well which we currently don't have. Um, so that would be where you would have a property that has a 40 foot um, setback to the lake on one side. Someone's looking to build a new dwelling here. The opposite side has no dwelling. So with the two-sided averaging, you can't use that. These people would be required to build at 75 feet. If you use the one-sided averaging, you'd have 40 feet, and then you would just set this other lot at 75 feet, and they would use that to have their setback average of, you know, 52 and a half feet or whatever that would be. Would that force that third lot though to be at 75? See, that's yeah, and that's <laughs> yeah. that's why maybe it didn't get put in there, and that's an optional that's, one as well. So that's I mean, but you see that then you're forcing him; he has to be at 75. And, yeah. yeah. So, because then if there's it, one on the opposite side of him, then you he's got 52, and now it, yeah, you know, it kind of keeps, yeah, <laughs> seesaw. It's right. really zigzag, and that's one that's optional. So, I mean, it is pretty easy just to say 75 feet on areas that we're able to. Um, so, just wanted to, you'll see that in there. So, I just wanted to touch. And then there's just some. As far as like the exempt structures, some language that wasn't in there from ours. Um, conforming structures that touches on lateral and vertical expansion. Um, so a lot of that I'm looking at getting the language to be consistent. Um, and if there's areas that you guys see that maybe, you know, maybe change some wording in it and we're able to change it. If it's not an area that needs to be, you know, verbatim, then we can you know, see exactly how we would like to do that. I guess that's more in like the filling and grading. And cause we have like a bunch of criteria in ours for certain um, sizing of the filling and grading and on what percentage slopes the model ordinance has more of a general um, what's required on filling and grading plans within that area of the lake. So yeah, this will kind of be a little bit of a, or a good start to give you an idea of what the model ordinance says. I'm not sure if everyone's seen it before or not, but, um, and how our ordinance reads compared to that. Um, and then probably have more of discussion and language at our next meeting. At the next one, okay. So do we have any Updates on the BOA. They've been having a lot of variance and certain things that we should be looking at. They've been pretty quiet this year, haven't they? Yeah, there hasn't been a whole lot. Yeah. Okay. Nothing that's glaring, I would say. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have one quick question, if I could. Yep. Just quickly, and just because I haven't gone through this. So is part of this, the, the model variance, does that include having late classifications? Or is that a Polk County thing? That's so that's, yeah, that's a a part of that we had in ours. And now there's like the setback is illegal to have late classification setbacks. 
Um, but as long as the, the seven standards that are in this, so like a side yard setback is not covered in this, so we can still have late classifications for side yard setbacks. Okay. Um, so that's why that's still in there um, because there's the criteria that we can and or we can't be any different than from the DNR, the seven standards that are explained in here. Um, but then there's areas that we can regulate that if it's not in here, yes. we can't be more restrictive than what they have in mm -hmm. this. Right. But then, yeah, but then other areas. It can't be in conflict. And, and this classification is specifically a Pocone thing for the side yard setback. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, for a few other things. Yeah. yeah. All right. 9.30. We're almost a minute late. And we'll do it. No, we'll do the. You have your stuff. We'll do the Hayes. Uh, and Christian DeLong first. You got to read that one in. Uh, we will start our public hearing on that. Hayes and uh, Christian DeLong requested district change from Agricultural 1081 to Residential R for a parcel located at 994 120th Avenue in Section 4, Town 33 North. Range 16 West in the town of Lincoln. <coughs> Parcel number is 032 0060 0000, and it is a 2.68 acre parcel. Um, so Claire has it up on the map here for us um, on the zoning districts over here. Right there. Oh, that one. That's one of the great things with Beacon. You don't never know what's going to pop up when you yeah. pull it up. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's one thing I've been struggling with. If I click on soils, it's yeah. Anyways, um, so as you'll see, the intent or property has residential zoning within 300 feet of the Apple River. Um, Lincoln has a large A1 or A or cultural 10 district side of you know, that shoreland area. So this property has residential and A10. Um, on the, this specific property. And the intent or the reason for the rezone is they prefer their shed to go, you know, in this area, which has increased setbacks due to the difference in R1 and A10 or A1 setbacks. Um, but as you can see, their lot is a majority is zoned R1. Um, but their request would be to make this whole lot R1. Um, the town approved the rezone at their September 11th meeting of this year, 2024. Um, the property is located on the Apple River, which is a class two body of water. Um, and as I stated, the current uh, land use is residential. Um, the, the surrounding land, uh, all within 300 feet of the Apple River is zoned residential, and then those areas outside are egg 10. The current land use, so not zoning district, is a mix of, as you would expect, residential along the river, and then there's a lot of egg as you zoom out from there. A lot of agricultural use as well once you get off the river. Um, the applicant purchased the property um, in July of 2024. The property currently has a dwelling, as you can see, located here. Um, the parcel has access off of 120th Avenue, which it does split right here, but they are off of 120th Avenue. And the side or the side yard setback difference is in egg 10, it's 25 feet in R1. Um, it would be five feet, but the class two does have a greater side yard setback. So they would still have a 10 foot side yard setback due to the classification of the Apple River. So they would be going from 25 feet down to 10 feet, which I believe the applicant stated would work for their intended build of an accessory building. Um, there are no wetlands on the property, but there is um, some floodplain uh, 
if you could click on that. So. But the floodplain is all down um, towards the uh, Apple River, and it is Zone A floodplain. So this building would not be affected by that. Um, the county did provide a proper class two legal notice um, prior to this hearing and did not receive any public comments on this request. That's all I have. Okay, so the, the only the small part in green is the A. How about the cleanup of, of the lot line going through all the buildings on the next lot? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to rezone, we're going to redo stuff and still, is there a conflict, you know, or anything or what? For the property, yeah. Where it goes through all the other buildings next yeah. door. Yeah, I mean the lot lines wouldn't be changing, so there. I don't think there'd be any um, enforcement on our end. You know, if that if they were proposing a new lot. Um, but I mean, that's it could be a legal issue, Joe. What do you think? I mean, separate from zoning. So you're talking about cleaning up lot lines. Where also I'll note. Just because beacon shows a line through a building does not necessarily mean that a line actually goes through that building. It can be upwards of so when they, 10 to 15 feet. So they, if they come for a building permit, they we could have them survey it so that they know that the setback is correct, and then they could correct that. We're just at the district park. Right. So if you're talking about permitting, then potentially then the, it, yes, it would be to tied move. to that. Okay. Right now, it's just a district. So we, okay, so we leave it. Going through buildings, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's maybe, just kind of maybe going just doesn't buildings. work yeah. sometimes. All right, all right. Is the owner here? Yeah, I'm here. You're here. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to come up to add anything, or are you good, or what? Um, I just comment on that property line you're referring to to the neighbor there, the Sukits. Uh, the line is definitely off. We did have a surveyor out there. And then the property line is like eight feet from their prop from the pole barn. So the blue line is not accurate, and the blue line along the water doesn't quite follow the edge of the actual um, map very well. So it's off. Do you have a map of surveyors? No, it's PSM. No, but I mean that's for your building permit. You'd have that probably. Then. Interesting. Yeah. When, the, when you come to do that to to prove that you're not, because <laughs> they would come and contest it. I think. The, Ed, I'm the adjoining neighbor, and I had a map survey done of my property, and that line is not through that building. Ty Dodge did my map survey, and that's probably sitting in the whatever, whatever, whatever department. Yeah, whatever. Okay. All right. So I know for a fact that what the measurement is. Sure. Okay. So basically, we're just looking. At, uh, the change. district change yeah. that, and they'll have to battle over that. Just that it was noticed that. All right. So, does anybody have any question? Was there anybody else here for this? No. Okay. Uh, well, pretty much then we can just we'll close the public hearing part that or what? I just have one question, and whether or not it's totally germane to this or not, but I I, I guess I just wanted to make a point as I was just as we reason I asked the question earlier about shoreland and side yard setbacks. So this ex same exact example, if this person happened to be on a class three lake, all of a sudden they couldn't do that. Is that correct? Because they wouldn't, because now their side, their side yard setbacks would be 25 feet. Correct. So I'm not saying that I, I know your job is to enforce the ordinance as we have them. I'm just looking at some other scenarios. And I, I think it's really interesting that right now Polk County has ordinance that says this person, because they happen to be on Apple River, well, they can only be five or 10 feet from their line, but somebody else, because they live on a different lake, now all of a sudden have to be 25 feet. And they want it, and I, and I have no, nothing against the idea of being able to utilize their property. I just, I just want to make that point mm -hmm. that I, I have some concerns about our side, our current side yard setback rules. So, like I said, whether it's germane or not, I just think this is a really good example of this person wants to do this so they can actually build where they want to build on their own property. But if that same exact piece of property was on a different lake, it doesn't affect the quality of the lake. It doesn't affect anything else because where they want to build is away from the lake. Or, and this one is from the flow, flowage or the river. 
doesn't affect anything on on the quality of the water. It's just on our rules. So that's my point. Good point. Good to go. All right. So yeah, it's to touch on Kim. So you were more of as far as the lot line, them putting their shed here. You were thinking like if this is off, we would want to want to make sure that they're not going to be putting well, it. Well, they put a jet up and okay. say it's that makes eight and then it's five. And now we got the another lot line off again. Yep. So, so so that's part of it too, that we have to have on tight lots that we'd have to recall so, survey. Yeah, if they're looking to be right at the 10 foot setback, we yeah. would, we would you know, have a survey. Something done. like that to make sure it was that close. Which right. it sounds like. We would it. recommend. We have um, required to prove it. Is, is that part of our ordinance? No, but if they would be required to prove to us that they're going to meet the setback. So if there's no, if there's pins out there, they don't need a new survey done at all. But if there's nothing out there, they can't prove where their lot line is. Okay. They would have them. That's fair. Yep. There's yeah. Pins. I would right. think with that size, that kind of, there's probably pins somewhere with the jag in it. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so. Thank you. Perfect. So back to this then, for that, what is, do you have your, uh, yeah. Thanks. I do have the minutes from Lincoln. Um, Be like exhibit one then or something. Yeah, do you want to make that exhibit one? So it's in the file. It, yeah. It's just two pages, isn't it? I have that. Because then it's the Planning Commission also approved it on the second page. So do you have it or do you want mine here? I do have one. I just, okay. You looking for the um just the town. The town right here. here. Right here. They're in the back no, here. In the back here. Okay. Yeah. That one. Oh yeah, I think the only other what other document did I have in here, Claire? The map of it. Okay, yeah, that's good. So the findings in fact. You had a zoning map, yes. Over in the staff report, is there any changes? Any changes you see that would be requested? At no, the wetlands, you had the floodplain is on there. It's at the other end. No, for changing that, I don't see anything. So then as far as the conclusions go, um, changing the zoning of this property to residential R1 is supported by the town of Lincoln. The surrounding lots are used for residential and agricultural purposes um, currently. So rezoning the property complies with the Polk County comprehensive plan existing and surrounding land use and will not have a negative impact on existing public infrastructure. And down a little further, the staff recommendation would be to recommend approval of the rezone to the full county board. Does anyone see anything else? I think it's all pretty much there. Mm -hmm. I'll entertain a motion then. I move that we move this to the consent agenda at the uh, county yeah. board meeting <laughs> as, um, as approval coming from this committee for the rezone. Is there a second? Doug will second it. Okay. Any okay. other questions or anything? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That will go through. No one answered. We'll go through to the next on the board. Oh, next Tuesday already. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Ready to start the next one? We are ready. 
All right. Um, David Chanel requests a conditional use permit under section 42-82, parent C, parent four of the Polk County Code of Ordinances to operate a storage rental facility for a parcel located in section 27, town 37, range 17 of the town of West Sweden. Parcel number is 0480944-0000. And this parcel is 1.6 acres. <clears throat> I do have all documents that we received. I don't think they made it part of the pack. The one was just yesterday. It's a letter from the DOT as far as the placement of the whole storage. The other, um, it's a it's from the town meeting, but. A conditional use permit isn't required to go through the town, so I don't know if you're interested in that or not. The town did discuss it, but there's. I don't think does the town do they have their own zoning? No, it's county zoning. So okay. So I mean, I, I don't think this was their way of commenting. They didn't make any comments on it, you know, as the town can, but <clears throat> but we can. I'll go into the report here. Um, so as you can see, Claire has the map up. We can uh, pull up the zoning district map quick, please. Let's show that it is zoned um, a commercial property. Um, there is Portland protection area. So as you see, part of the property due to a, a stream here is in Shoreland. Um, the rest of it's in um, our comprehensive area. The current proposal is to have these units out, not in the Shoreland area. Um, so I just wanted to show you where that line is. So, I mean, the, the property is already zoned commercial um, and the current project is not proposed in the Shoreland district. You could turn those off, please, just so we can see a little bit better. Um, so this conditional use permit um, involves a 1.6 acre parcel on State Highway 35, just north of Frederick. If you can zoom out just a touch, just go a little further. So the village of Frederick is here. Um, the high school is up there. This property is just going out of Frederick to the north towards Lewis. Um, the parcel has an existing driveway off of State Highway 35. Um, there is a delineated wetland on the property. That should show up. Uh, all right up here, wetlands. So there's a corner in the northwest part of the parcel that is a wetland. Um, there is no floodplain or navigable water on the parcel. The parcel is mostly wooded with the exception of that open grass area um, towards the state highway. The applicant would like to operate an outdoor storage rental space, um, which is a required conditional use in our commercial zoning district. Um, so that is why he is here today. And as you'll see, a part of the application, um, the intent is just to have storage units, no power or water on the proper to that property. Um, so as far as concerns of sanitary system or anything, there's no no um, building for bathrooms or anything. It's just to have storage units. Um, there are no current buildings on the property. There is an existing concrete pad, as you can see here. Um, and that is the intent of the applicant to use that as the base to set the storage containers on. Um, this portion, which you'll see in pictures in a, in a second here, has been placed or class five gravel has been placed. So that is no longer grass. There is gravel up to that pad. 
And then there has has been areas of um, crushed concrete areas to also areas that aren't on the concrete pad to have a base for the the other storage rentals or units and the number of units for the application is i believe 15 units is what currently he has on the application can i ask a question yeah. yep go ahead yeah so you, when you say units is this a building or is it so they're containers, storage, storage containers being good. used as okay. rent, storage rentals but it's not like semi trailers that are sitting on the ground no so yeah we, let's go to the pictures and we can show you so there is currently um units that were placed out there prior to this um that'll be as far as that'll be more of a zoning administrative issue um so that's the driveway here going out to highway 35 these are the i think there's four units currently out there so that is how it you know they're shipping containers on the property placed on that concrete pad um this is that gravel that was placed this is looking towards the lewis and this is that crushed i believe this is that area that's crushed concrete for a pad that's not on the existing concrete pad. And this would be the area that they would be expanding towards. Um, as you can see, there's, I don't believe there's enough room. Uh, we can have the applicant talk on that later. Um, but I believe the expansion would go this way, which would be toward the, towards the north and northeast. Um, this is looking, Towards Lewis again, so towards the northeast. So looking back towards town, so this is the hill coming out of Frederick. Showing the, the pad area or drive pad area in front of the units that are currently there. <clears throat> um, if you go back to that first picture. So this is just showing, oh, oh, sorry, second. Um, this is just showing behind the storage units. Um, it is a highly or densely vegetated area, and that goes down. I can show you the elevation on the other map, but that drops down pretty steep elevation and then into that wetland. Um, but the, currently there is a pretty good buffer um, between that concrete pad and storage containers and the wetland. I think it's about 150 feet away from the concrete pad. Um, if you could go back, or does anyone have any questions on the pictures? Well, do they, do, so when they move those containers in there, they sit there or they'll be going in and out, in and out? They'll sit there. So it'll be like, or as far as I'm aware, they will, they're putting these on the property. People will rent them, drive in, put their stuff in them. And just like a storage just unit. Just like a storage unit. Just not a building. building. Yeah, yeah, just not a building. Correct. They'll be welded together. Ah, okay. They'll be welding to each other? Huh. Apparently for a tornado. Oh. oh. Never thought of that. So then another question, do we have setbacks? Do they have to be so far off the right away? Yep, so that is, if you could go back to. <clears throat> when we look at that, I mean, for setbacks. It's that's a setback. Or, yeah. No, but that's just, that's not a setback. So they're not in the DOTs right away. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right away. So that is part of um, the application as well. This concrete bat pad, or yesterday when I was out there and measured, I had um, the, the units currently at 76 feet to the center line. Um, a state highway is 110 feet from the center line or 50 feet from the right of way, um, which if you take 50 feet from the right of way, it is you know consuming much of that concrete pad. Um, but as far as the conditional use permit goes, you know, they would be required to put them in a permittable location if this conditional use permit is approved. 
that's where it gets a little bit. Um, well, they need a variance to, to. They would need, yeah. So if it's approved that they can use the property for a storage rental facility and they want to put them where they have them, it would require a variance. It would require a variance because yep. they're under the setbacks. Oh, Correct. That's what I was shooting for. That oh, you don't have the DOT that says they have no issues with it. Um, as it was proposed to them, there is some questions on that as far as it being um, proposed to them as a personal storage shed rather than a. Yeah, we're saying it's a personal storage yeah. shed. So there's different. Talking with DOT yesterday, there's they might there be some changes there um, that they might have to go through or will have to go through. Um, if you could turn on the elevation, I just wanted to show the backside of it as far as runoff. Concerns. Uh, I think it's down. Bob. <laughs> what are we at the And then, if you want to hit splits again, when you hit that bang list, hey, it just gives you lots of options. Yeah. As you can see, the area along the highway here <clears throat> is um, flat, and then there is a, a steep drop off down in towards that wetland area. It's it. dropping uh, ten feet mm -hmm. or. 16 feet, I guess, 12 feet in that, in that area. Um, as far as a staff report, I believe that's all I had. But shared driveway, it's not cracking. I think that's what the DOT is worried about, wasn't it? <clears throat> so that is that driveway going to be just for the storage unit or does it go to the north yet? Uh, yeah. I, I, I guess I don't know how it's being used. I, I can let the applicant talk on that. But okay. Yeah, the driveway is still currently like it is showing on the map. Like it's showing. Yeah. So it is being used. Okay. And the county did provide a proper class two legal notice prior to this hearing and received no public comment. Okay. Maybe we'll have the applicant come up and add anything, or we can ask him questions. So come on up, state your name. Um, Hildy. Okay. Um, so there is a business here at uh, Auction House. It auctions there once a week. Um, the owner owns, the same owner owns both pieces of property. Um, so he was just, we were just hooking right off here and doing a driveway into here from the pictures. Um, and we were hoping to use that concrete pad because it does drop off pretty deep there and Okay. I don't know if we can do it if we didn't use that. But. So they own both, but it's going to be, okay, it said personal storage sheds, copy of that. Okay, the DOT will send whatever. Yeah. Uh, can we go down, Claire, a little bit so we can see the, it goes, is there another driveway farther up too? Is that a horseshoe driveway? It is. Okay, oh, so there is more than one. Yes. Okay. Would it be blocked off so they would be separate or just leaving it hooked? We'd probably it. just leave it hooked. Yeah. <laughs> For a driveway. Yeah. And you said 15 units? 15, correct. And they would be what, connected together? Yes. And they'd be connected, all right. 15 total or additional? Total. So that would be a condition, no more than 15 on the site. What else in well, other future roads? Anyone else have any questions to also? So another condition would be getting approval from the DOT. Yes, yes, if that is not, that they want something else because they I think they assumed it was personal. So I think they should know that it's a rental. It might be just wording is all okay but it says they, they're going to give you a permit it must not have been a permit for that driveway for some reason do we know logan that it says a copy of the permit application is included so they applied for a permit I believe yeah there was a permit applied for because of the change in use or, okay or that's okay. yes yeah. properly permitted yeah yeah so that it has the right permit so that would be a condition that we would know. Okay. All right. Any other questions of the owner? We need 
something in the conditional use about the setback. That'll be a condition. We'll have to do that as a condition too. That it would need a variance if it changes. Yeah, I mean that's what this discussion yeah. for. Yeah, and that's where that's why you put that up to show how steep it was that he can't go back very far. Right. Yeah. So just a question on so like on the pictures it shows that you have the units. Some of them already sitting there on the concrete. So are you going to be adding to the back of that concrete with some crushed concrete? There is. Oh, yeah. Well, they fit just perfectly on there. On the on the concrete slab. On the concrete. And it'll set back from the front of the concrete about a foot and a half. So is there a driveway between the units and the vegetation on the back? No. Kind of what it shows here on the... the schematics on the yard. shows that there's crushed concrete under unit. Mm -hmm. And it looks like there's a driveway here. So this is the front. No, there's not. That's just a line of measurement. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. There's no, it, it drops off. So there won't right be anything here. behind to the no. west or north. The unit's only open from one end anyway. Yeah. 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 So now in our ordinance also, do we have anything with screening of storage units or anything? Do we have anything for that? I think so. I don't know if we do, do we? In a commercial district? Yeah, probably. I'm there be maybe lighting, but I don't think there's going to be any. But with no power, there's no yeah. lights. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Okay, you're good. Okay. Anybody else here to speak on this one? No. Okay. In order to make it look pretty. Uh, do we know what the zoning classification on that is? Business commercial. It was red. Was red. That, was that was the first one he showed us. That it was yeah. already. It was already commercial. That was the red. Yeah. That came up on the, the business system. commercial well, on 35. Yeah. So that part was what? good. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Not you. It's mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, are we good with questions or do we want to get to the findings? Yeah. Should we go through the findings? Yeah. Let's go through those then. All right. <clears throat> Findings again, um, they're consistent with the staff report um, as far as the facts of the property. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add to the findings of fact? Maximum number of units is 15. Do we that would be a condition. That would be a condition. Yeah, so that would be next after the. That would be after this added on there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the property is not on. Who's the applicant? Is it Robert or is it Dave? Dave, yeah. Dave Chanel, and I believe there's two or three of there's three people involved in this. Yeah. Okay, so the driveway is existing. Yeah, okay. That would just be, yeah, you have to exhibit number this one too and then use that. All right. I think we've had everything on there, don't we? Anybody see anything missing? No. I think we go through some of the conditions. I could maybe add the, I don't know if I have the, as far as the slope on there, but I don't know if that needs to be added. <clears throat> Uh, just, but, uh, as far as because we'll, oh. we'll go through the conditions and possibly we'll yep. um, add to that. But so as far as the conditions or staff recommendation, um, staff, if you could go up just a touch, Claire, please. Um, or read the first. Yeah. Staff would recommend granting of the conditional use permit to operate an outdoor storage facility if the committee determines all the criteria have been met on the following conditions. So these are the conditions that I came up with. Um, any that need to be moved or added that you can do that. Um, so must obtain all proper permits and licenses and meet all regulations from all other local and state agencies. So that one there would cover, you know, as far as the DOT requirements of their permit, um, you know, the permitting through us as far as the setbacks. 
So I did also put that later. I wasn't sure because it is required um, to be a setback to that structure if you even need that as a condition because they wouldn't be able to put them within the setback without a variance. So I don't know if that would be. I think we should leave it as a condition so that they know they have to do it. Okay. So <laughs> you know, because we get we say it it passes and they don't they'll they'll assume that it's good where it yeah. is. I think we better leave that in that it has to have a variance. So the next one I have is all parking and accessible drive pads to be on an impervious surface um, and runoff from these impervious surfaces must be contained on the property. Um, clearly mark the property lines near the storage units to ensure all renters and vehicles remain on the property. Vegetated buffer between the storage units and the wetland shall remain unless approval is received by the zoning department to remove. All setback requirements must be met unless a variance is granted for a reduced setback. Um, the property must remain free from citation and charges for nuisance or any other illegal activity. Um, and then I wasn't sure as far as the conditions on the placement of these storage containers um, because the conditional use permit would be for the property itself. Um, we would recommend, you know, obviously on that steep slope, we wouldn't recommend them filling that to put more units there. Um, well, that we're going to limit it to. Yeah, so that would be. I wrote that down. You guys put. We should go to the fifteen, 15. units. No more than fifteen units. Yeah, I think we got to have that on there. So then, if they would request more, um, they would have to come back. They'd have to come back. Yep. Can you put where they're going to be placed? Yeah. Because if you say fifteen, you know, and they scatter them, which I don't think they're going to do, but. Do they need to be within the so okay. such an area of that concrete? That's I think it's kind of says that. Jim, no, that's well, the, it's a question mark. He's asking to story container placement location, right? Yeah, that's yeah. It's kind of do we want well, that or do we not want? Because it? of the setbacks, we don't know where they if they can even put them on there yet. Eric has a question. If I could add one thing to add to the what if scenarios, you know, if they're not allowed within the setback and they're required to improve that site to go backwards to go backwards and start excavating and adding fill um, adding more than 500 cubic yards of material there to level it off would require a stormwater and erosion control permit as well permit too, so as well to think about so the variance would decide where that's going to end up so i think i don't think we can say they can be on there otherwise they don't need the variance yeah they have to get a variance to say they can put them there I think we're kind of caught in between if I'm looking at that right. Don't you think? I mean, we can't say they got to put them on the concrete well, but, well, and they don't get a variance and they have to go back 50 feet, then what? More or less what I'm hearing from Eric is if they get a variance, then uh, they'll use the slab. If they don't get a variance, they're going to have to apply for a permit that then if they don't, if they don't comply with our conditional use anyway, because they're yeah. required to get all permits. Yeah. So basically they're kind of stuck using the slab or if they're not going to use the slab they're going to need to get a new permit anyway yeah, yeah. so regardless we're covered we're, we're covered to a point but we'd like to make it kind of clear that if you do move this is what you have to do you know so okay i have a question um just on number six because i've seen this on other uh conditional use you know, requirements, property must retain free of citation and charges for nuisance or any other legal activity. So what does that mean? Does that mean if they get a charge for nuisance that automatically negates their conditional use permit, it means they're going to get a warning? Does it, I mean, what what does that mean? They're supposed to say clear, but what if what if it does happen? Then then what? Does that tell, does that say it's that immediately they, they have to cease and desist their business? It gives the county the grounds to use the county's discretion and prosecutorial discretion to withdraw the conditional use permit. So the county would have to go through a, a major process in order to. Not necessarily a major a process. Process, though. There's a process. A process. It's more, for, it's, that was more for the tour grooming houses stuff. Well, oh, oh, I, I understand where it came from, okay. so, but that's yeah. also, I know there's issues with those. And so yeah. that's where I've also seen it. Like, well, so if there is these, and I'm not saying anybody's going to do anything wrong. I'm just saying 
is there does there need to be more meat even in that statement? If we're going to do a conditional use permit and we're worried that they're going to have a drug ring running out of there, um, that I mean, I'm just throwing that out again. I'm, I, I don't have any issue really with the with the storage units. I'm just it does does that have enough bite for what we really if we're doing these conditional use permits and saying, hey, they got to stay clean. I mean, do we need to have it a little harsher saying, you know, you get two and you're automatically done and then you need to reapply? I mean, I don't know. We have, get, we well, have some of that in there that we have to work. Theoretically, the way it's written, it's zero tolerance. Zero. Yeah. 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 That's so zero yeah. tolerance. We okay. could arguably go and say. We could. Right. Arguably. But then we need, you know, the compliance personnel in our air, you know, in our office, obviously, to be able to. To, to do, go do that, do those, do those things, right? Which is exactly, yeah. You know, we do have some compliance months. with the tourist rooming where we gave them 100 days and did all that. Yeah. I think we're cleaning some of that up because that got to be we're trying, we're trying, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it, that got to be do I get 30 days? Do I not? Do I get yeah. 60 days? Well, right. you just need so that's that's the cleanup part, right? Yeah, I think it would be on the end of in our ordinance underneath the conditional use section, it would have to say something, and I don't know exactly what it says because that's gotten changed as well as far as if it's immediately revoked or yeah if there's if there's warning gifts yeah and so I'm to go down the rooming house argument I just yeah. that statement to me is is kind of like you need to behave but <laughs> but how do you enforce you know if it's we the same as this, for those that keep them it's that the those same that as follow them I have an issue with exactly I say it I don't is. like that it is it's I don't like rules thing. just for those that follow them does there, go. There's there's forgiveness and then there's permission. Yeah. Come on, let's be real here. No, it does go. <laughs> what it does give us though is the the latitude depending on the violation to say what how 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 harsh the reaction would be from the county. Okay. So if so it was a drug spike, trash on the ground. Yeah. yeah, it gives us the ability to appropriately okay. um, go after them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. That card so that pretty much covers all the things we have to ask. Uh, telling you. Just telling you. The pollution, that, no, that slope, we have that. So then we just have to exhibit this. Like exhibit one for the transportation one or something. What else came with this one? Um, there was the town um, meeting, but... They just, but they didn't. They just said they had no objections to it. Objections. Maybe just, maybe we should put that in there anyway. Okay. So, so it's in the file that they had no objections. So that we at least we know they touch base with them. DOTs exhibit one. I would say that, and then your town one would be exhibit two. And this would just be cleaned up where it says personal. Probably will say storage shed, whatever permit they have to get. Is that in what one of our conditions is on a number one? It's covered. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I mean, to the location, I guess, what is the. I, I mean, you could probably put a. Have to have is that bind? Because we've dealt with this in other permits as far as if what they apply for, are they bound? Because, like, their permit shows that these are going to be placed on the pad. If that gets um, no variance approved or, you know, if they're not able to put them there, does that then make them have to change their whole conditional use permit because they're not going to be putting them as applied for? Or is it a condition that we say storage units must be on that? Or in, just for the fact that if all of a sudden now they're going to be changing them, you know, to meet the setback and it's going to be a completely different design, I don't know. That's so well, they'd have to stay off the slopes. They'd have to come back, I think, for another. They'd have to almost come back that we gave them. Yeah. Because, I mean, you could prevent that. I mean, they would need a permit to do that on the slope, but if if it was limited to the space that's already flat, you would then be, I guess, preventing that if they come through and get all of the permits that they need to if they get all the, that slope, if that's something we're you know fine with is changing the slope, and then, then I think it's fine to stay. Yeah, I think if they, get, if they do that number one and get everything. Yeah. I think we're we're good that way. I mean, they if they just if they say no setbacks and they want that extra fifty feet, it's almost in a non-buildable area. It almost makes the land useless. So I would think they'd have a little hardship there, uh, you know, because they didn't 
make their own hardship. I mean, it is natural that it was a hill there. So, I mean, if they'd have dug it out or something, then you would could do it. But I think we should leave it to that. And if and if they make them go back, they they might say it isn't worth trying to move it for 15 storage units, what it would cost. So we'll remove number seven completely. <laughs> well, I mean, it was more of a question. So we won't, more of a question. we won't have anything in there for them. Yeah. <clears throat> because that'll be after the variance. It uh, would show that. And it might be cost prohibitive to even move back if they could even, because it gets pretty steep to. Yeah, I think there's some. Gain it and do some of that. That gets. You could pull up the map, Claire. I think there's, you know, a partial area that would be able to meet the setbacks um, back in, you know, like this corner would be an area that potentially if they say, okay, hey, we got, we didn't get the variance. We still are going to. Um, trying to get six in there to meet the setbacks and they would move them over there. I just wasn't sure how that would exactly affect this permit, but the, it's for the use of the property. So it's, it's pretty, they yeah. would be completely fine doing that. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. How's everybody feeling with that with those conditions and stuff? Are we down to where we can do a motion or? I'll make a motion that we approve and move to the consent agenda. <laughs> oh, I'll second. This one doesn't go to the it doesn't, it go, doesn't. doesn't go to the county board. Oh, it's and just it's conditional use. Yeah. Okay, I might make a motion to approve. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second from Trace. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those three favors say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. So what did we skip? Ordinance. Rent litigation update and review work plan. And the work plan, are we? So our work plan pretty much. when we were talking about these DNR um, oh. so I the only thing I want to bring up is yesterday on um Bone Lake site I think it's Bone Lakers they, they there was a new company that was doing um some landscaping and they had some pictures in there of what they can do and they were showing some shoreland mitigation or whatever with so we're 18 inches two feet yep. all the way down the shoreline for some feet. I just wanted to bring that up so we can get it into the discussion possibly pick, take a picture off of the website and just to discuss that was on the bone lake you said evidently because it was already done but I don't know where I don't know if it was even in Wisconsin to tell you the truth they didn't say they just uh -huh. said they were looking for work on uh, own lake, on lake. You know, or a lake. Or well, that's DNR when they do that, isn't it? Not if it's, I mean, was it above the ordinary high water mark? I would say no, because it was the rocks were right, right in the water. That's right that's in the water. That's yeah, DNR. the water up the coming. My baby's here could pull it up real quick. I don't know. I don't, you said it was what? The Bone Lakers, I think that's what it is. Website. There is some different shoreline. Yeah. Uh, there, DNR also has an exemption checklist for rock rip wrap if it meets requirements and, and is within you know, so many feet. And They're they did say they would do all. a permit. Otherwise, that's typically a permitted activity by DNR. That's what they said. Big Lake has a few. So. They weren't trying to, they, they said they would do all the permits. So I just, it just looked like a different problem. Oh, I've got it right here. It's on their Facebook page. Yeah. It's big rocks right down into the water. Oh, we. Yeah, that's the one. Lake Michigan. Big <laughs> rocks. <laughs> yeah, I know there's sizing of the rock oh, yeah, on that DNR exemption too. Yep. Yep. 
Let me see it closer over there. And Can you see or do you want to see? Well, send it to Claire. She'll put it right on the big screen. I don't have Facebook on my phone. I just saw it yesterday, so I don't. Oh, did it? I don't. No, it went <laughs> back. Oh. You need my oh. face. Uh, You'll be happy oh. to know. Oh. <laughs> There's been some on uh, Big Lake on a few different lakes. There's been some pretty good. There's been a few messes on Balsam Lake for that were just done because they could do it. <laughs> Some big rocks on my notes too. Um, oh, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. I had to get but I can only send it from Facebook. Oh, sure. So you'd almost have so to take a screenshot. Wash it off. There you go. I guess nurse, can I still talk? Yeah. Yes. Can yeah? Can we? Is go there back? anything that you guys have that us <laughs> to look into? I think Pam had some some stuff. You, but I'm getting weight because we. Well, I have I've, some information for you, okay. um, Pam. I think um, since we're talking about it, there's been some discussion about adjoining landowners, and um, we certainly know there are buildings that go through lot lines from years past. Um, as I understand, then there was an ordinance change that basically eliminated that moving forward, people were going to be required to have a survey to always change lot lines. Um, I'm talking with the county surveyor about like what would need to change if there was an adjoining landowner clause for merging maybe two parcels together um, without requiring a survey. So I'm looking at specifically um, just... So everybody understands specifically to section 32-9, it's in our subdivision ordinance. Um, and it's the um, it's the part of the ordinance that basically says survey required. Um, and there are some already um, options in there, uh, but I'm talking to Ed Flanham, the county surveyor, about if there could be an additional clause in there for adjoining landowners for you know, other like another other exemption or the requirement for the survey, um, okay. and just to, just to kind of clarify. So my some of my examples are that I and I brought up multiples. So I do know that on my turkey barn, the the um, quarter section line goes through the middle of the barn. Okay, if at that time I would have had to be a twenty five foot setback from that line, all of a sudden that's going to burn a whole bunch of more ag land that I didn't need to burn. I own two hundred and fifty acres right there, and I and I go through and, and literally it took ten minutes and found multiple places, especially ag where these section li these lines are going through the quarter section. The quarter lines. section lines are going through quarter. the quarter right. So it's not property lines; it's it's parcel lines. Sure. And the idea, if I wanted to do a lean to on that, either I can't or I have to spend. And I did look up some of the Drew Waterman situation, and you know he he's paying a thirty four hundred dollars to a surveyor to put all his property together, even though he owns two hundred and fifty acres right there. And I just think that that is, I I, I don't think that is um, an equitable way to to handle like. If, if you own property and I it's already there and now I need to do an addition or I want to make a change, what does that look like? Um, so that I struggle with. Um, and so that's where I started reaching out to Sarah. I was like, well, what can we do? Because I truly, I, I do really mean it that you guys really just work to uphold the ordinances that are there. You right. are not, mm -hmm. you're not at fault. I'm not attacking, you know, it's like, but but what do we do to go forward? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why that one was, I wanted to, that looked into. And so, and then the other one that I just brought up too is the whole side, side lot setback, mm -hmm. you know, that I've got a situation of the different constituents, like, um, I, if it was five feet, it wouldn't be a problem. And I own 240 acres and I'm on the backside of this lake, but it's a class three lake. And they're telling me either I've got to change, you know, get it all resurveyed or I can't put up my shed, which is still already away from the lake. And it's just because it's a class three instead of class one. That logic drives me crazy. Um, and so those are some of the things I would really like looked at as far as, especially when the setback laws, you know, that was made deemed illegal for the different setbacks that we had before, except the side side lot. It's like, so I would like that looked at as well. Right. Um, so that was the, and then the other one was just some of the, some of the teeth in potential um, rooming houses. I have had, I've had a person that reached out to me and her whole background is in regulatory compliance and how to set up rules so that it's not a, it's, they're like an automatic trigger versus Sarah or that team having to go out and do all this. It's like, no, here's the proof. Now you have to prove that you're back in compliance versus zoning have to prove you're out of compliance. 
right? Yeah. Is, how, how is there a way we can work with someone, create a committee, whatever? This woman is is willing to donate her time to help have a committee to talk about this. Would it be practical? And so that was, those are my three things in zonings that I was kind of yeah, yeah. flagging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they can get on someone, so like said, I've already reached out to Sarah, but. We did a catch all because it was all the small lots along the lakes mm -hmm. that did not want to survey and everything. Now we've got all these non conforming houses, six in a row. So yeah. if you're going to do it, you survey. All yeah. of a sudden the judge says yes, then he says no. Who, who better knows their lot line? Okay, so we did a catch all. So now that's when it carried over to the ag land into those parcels. That's what happened there. So maybe that's where the distinction should be. Sure. The smaller lots, that. Yeah. But the only thing is, now when that goes over, you would have to survey it to sell it or something. Because now that you line would, is You're going to sell it. Of course, right. you'd have to survey it to sell it, which I, I get we that. We should have a man to come in and explain how does half a building, half a building, if you're if you're doing each 40 mm -hmm. tax-wise, they just dump, They just dump it on one. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. just all dumped on one yeah. parcel. All right. So that's that's just something we you would want to know because that just seems like it would be hard for them. Right. Because you have two... Tax parcel numbers. Uh, agreed. But like I said, I, what I pulled, six of them are so I think I pulled and oh, just sent examples. Theirs. You can find lots of oh, them, you know. You and, and, and I just, and it goes back to, I, I just really don't like rules just for those that follow them, right. you know. And ultimately, we're trying to have, or the, you know, the board's trying to have rules in place that will make things better and not worse for right. the future. So, True. you know, if if we could have some sort of a like an instrument like a certified survey map is the instrument right now that we require mm -hmm. but if there's another instrument you know like a, an affidavit or something that would be on the title that would prove if you join two together eventually if you do anything you need to have a certified survey map or a different instrument there's i mean there's ways there's ways to Tie consider um, but I do think, you know, we did run into a lot of situations, especially especially around lakes, where, you know, people would buy a property and come in and say, how did the county allow this? I mean, right. this is, and so we're just trying to not kick it down for future generations. Right, right. You just want to, you know, but perhaps there is a distinction between egg property versus you know, right. residential property or, or size, size of, of lots. Size of lots. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, I, I don't know. It just, we're yeah. just, so we're looking at, yeah. I mean, nobody wants to make things worse for future. So like our no. first one today, then we should have them bring in a certified map to show them buildings weren't in there. Well, he, they did have a map, a survey. And I, I will say I have seen, should probably have that. I have seen cases so where data underlying can, you know, I mean, the ortho imagery underlying is just that, I mean, it's yeah. just ortho imagery underlying as we get more in, in more accurate data, like for example, the next data is going to be three inch accuracy. We're going to have less and less, you know, issues like that. But when you are only three or four feet off of a property line and, you know, the, the angle of the, of the, yeah. the, the imagery or the satellite is, is going to make a difference. So, um, we, so maybe two then in ours, so it doesn't make us scared when you look at one of these is if there is a CSM, we should have them. We should pull one and have well, it. Well, it would say right on the. It would say right on the. It person. does say some of these have survey maps or map of surveys, but we should pull that so that when it comes up on here, we don't all go. Now we're approving somebody to build, and it's yeah. They got lot lines through the buildings already, and we're making a bigger mess. Yeah. So do you know where do we stop the mess? Well, and again, all all adjoining property owners are are informed of it, and as as the the late the neighbor was there to say that there was a map of survey and. Um, I don't know, Logan, if there's something else we can do to. I mean, in that case, I just don't think there's anything that we can. I don't think we can tell them they can't rezone just because they have. Issues. That's that was my yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't think. Right. But we could say you can't have a permit till you clean that up. Well, we do that. Well, what? Be a condition on it, and they can't. No, not on there. But when they come to get a building permit, but you can't make the oh. neighbors get a survey. You know what right. I mean? Right. Like him, it's again, and then. Not? Well, but then you're also the bank should say oh, exactly you, to your point. Pam, they just like bought that. this. The guy bought it in 2024. He bought half of somebody's building. I'd say I'd go up there and say that's mine. Then what would happen? Right. Yeah, and that's the here's issue. my lot line. It goes through your shed. I want to park my stuff in my half the shed. That's the issue with allowing <laughs> these buildings on people that own both lots to cross because they get sold. And if it doesn't get caught in the transaction, now that person yeah. bought, just bought a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they buy that 40, I mean, the seller obviously should know that their barn is half through, but right. it, Not it happens all the right. time where people yeah. buy a lot and, oh, I have half a garage. Yeah. And the first sheds that were put yeah. up, your egg sheds that want to be five foot setbacks, all of a sudden now it's a shed house. 
it's just no, that's we don't the need history. The setbacks for uh, for that's the pricing. history of why that survey requirement even that's worked. that's part because of people it. were here like how did this happen how did right. we allow this as a county so there's that back history but generally the only time the issue this is from Ed Flanham of uh, having to adjust a parcel line on a larger tract of land. Um, you know, becomes an issue um, is due to proposed construction. So those, your barn can stay where it's at. And right, but, but if, if I you, want to add something on Then to you're it. looking at a, a possible survey, unless you're going to do this other instrument that would join those two together, like if, right. like that's what I'm having Ed invest in. Sure. And, and I just look at the idea of if I just needed to do an addition, and those, like I said, I had multiple farm buildings that if they just wanted to add whatever, all of a sudden now there it's an extra three grand just to do a survey that that seems a little egregious to me mm -hmm. you know so that's where that that's where four or five grand or four whatever yeah i mean i just pulled a number yeah. you know so th 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 those are just is is there something we can can do i get it yeah so it'd probably be more on the avenue of being able to issue a land use permit in a case like that so instead of surveying it is kind of what you're saying, right? If you want to put a lean to on it and you still own both of them. Right. Instead of us requiring that setback because you do own both, yeah. then you would have some sort of documentation that's stating that that yeah. has to be. And and we, up, yeah, and Logan, I'm not to in, interrupt, but we do have language in our ordinance. A survey is not required for the sale or exchange of parcels of land between unrelated owners of a budding property and arm length transaction. And it, there's language I just am asking Ed for some clarification on on unrelated owners. Obviously, was added in there for a reason, um, and and uh, there is language in there. And it also says that um, it shall be reviewed by the county prior to recording any document evidencing the contemplated sale or exchange of real estate under this exemption. So, and that's the county surveyor did did that review, and that's um, I'm sure it was in the. Um, an affidavit, you know, so I, I think there's an instrument there. It's just not clear what it is or how, to well, or that it has to be unrelated owners. And I think that was more for the adjustment of lot lines around. Sure. Unrelated owners, yes. but right. If I'm yeah. my own. But if you are both, yeah. that's why it, I am asking. The that. reason that, because I remember when Steve, when I had asked Steve Geiger about that, the reason that they changed it to unrelated owners is because they had some people or I don't know if they had it happen a lot or just didn't want it to happen where people can keep changing their lot lines whenever it's like, but I don't, I mean, I've always looked at that unrelated, like, so if you don't own it, you can do it, but if you right. don't own it, you can't. It's like, <laughs> Wait a minute. it does seem kind well, of. Well, that might be one clarification for ordinance clarification in the subdivision ordinance. That's, sure. I guess what, yep. yeah. where this whole getting. discussion, yeah. that's what where I'm going. Yeah. I have sure. Ed Flam, the county surveyor, also, so we're not making future headaches for future generations. Exactly, and we don't want that either. We can make it clean. Right. So, and then it could, so then can it be on the, the discussion as well, as far as the side lot issue? Can that be a different point that we discuss? That, that'll be in That's all of this, the, anything we bring yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it, it, we bring up, because we haven't even looked at it yet. You can, well, right. It's just, we Tim see my got his highlighter out yet. Well, <laughs> Pam does. See my, see I had the highlighter going. Kind of. Doug has something here. Shame on you. Yeah. In a related subject to this, four or five years ago, the Clam Falls Hotel was sold. And back in the railroad days, Clam Falls was built on tiny lots. And the hotel was on two lots. And in order to be sold, it had to have a new sewer. And they were required, because they owned two lots, one building, to have it surveyed. So they had to pay that cost before they could sell. And it just didn't seem right to me. I mean, you got this big building on there. It was actually three lots because they put the sewer across. It could have been three. I because then it was across the lot line and they couldn't meet the setbacks and they put the sewer in. It was everything oh down, every yeah. sewer. Well, at like, some yeah. Yeah. at some point, some of these things do need to be cleaned up, um, especially if new sewers and things are coming in and like. The Wanderers area has a complete plat, you know, and there's there's lots and everything. They're all right. 50 by 150 yes, by yes. 7. So that is common. And the only instrument to really erase those lot, underlying lot yeah. lines is is through certified survey. Um, and Pretty so sure deeds burn that book. Well, <laughs> again, the real estate instrument is the, you know, the CSM is the cleanest, again, for future generations. But yes, yeah. those type of things happen all the time. But there is, like we said, there is a lot of, of 
maps of surveys too, and, and things are in different places because I've had to find a few to go down to Ed to find those in a regular survey map yes. because all of them aren't the same. That's what's crazy because all these old plats around the lakes are just terrible. A map of survey is truly just depicting your meets and bounds description or your legal description, right? It doesn't yeah. actually have, it doesn't change your legal description. A certified survey map actually changes your legal description. CSM or approves change. what's there. Yeah, I mean, that's it, that becomes you know, your new, that, that becomes that's your, where it is. like I talk about it as an instrument, but that becomes your new legal document. Mm -hmm. a, meet, a, a map of survey is simply just a, a map of your, exi your existing legal description still stands. Yeah. So the two instruments are. Yeah. And that one doesn't have to be registered. So you save 30 bucks. Right. <laughs> that's well, the only thing. The 30 yeah. bucks doesn't bother me. The it's three the or four five thousand, thousand is what bothers me. <laughs> and that's not getting any cheaper. So in yes. 30 years, it'll probably be. Then she sells the 140 and says, but I'm keeping the building. Even Stop it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You can let me park in your hat. I'm not That's thinking about selling my building. It's just a really easy example. <laughs> raise turkey in half. There, there you yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. Turkey's in just half There you go. There you go. Back then, you if you them. owned all the property, there, you know, it was a non-issue. Right. Okay. But then the sales made it. So that'll be on our meetings. Thank you. That's December and January. Forward. Yeah, this is last year's stuff, isn't it? So what do we... Uh, uh, the wildlife damage stuff, does that come into us yet in February or March or January? Um, we start adding our new so stuff. Back on that one really quick. Cody, Cody should come in December. I would yes. need to uh, reach December. out to him and make sure that he's available, but I'm happy to do that. So oh, we could okay. put that one as maybe a tentative agenda item. Sure. And then I can confirm with Shabana that if it works for him or not. Okay. So otherwise, we'd be looking at First thing, January. Yeah, it's on the December. It's on the December. Make sure yeah. Justin's here for well, like damage for Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And we do have the undeveloped lead study. So then, I mean, just our next meeting, or the next two, we'll kind of start setting up our year. That, yeah, he's uh, our price stuff. Man. He's that we go to all the time, and then, and then take out the other stuff we don't. Think okay. Better. And then on December, it says develop. 2025 work plan and finalized 2025. I know. <laughs> a very ambitious agenda. Yeah. Yeah, do both at one. Yeah. I'm going to just take off that finalized because of the constant working drafts. Those doesn't make any sense. So yeah, we'll see. I'm yeah. going to take that off of all of them. There okay. you go. Yeah. It's a living document as things change. Yeah. yeah. There's no finalizing. We just add and change as necessary. So that's always been the case and how it was handled before, but I don't like that. So we're going to remove that okay. finalize. So then any... Uh... Oh, and you did want to have um, a presentation on Beacon. You know, you just, uh, I'll add that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Whenever time he can do that one, because you can see even here when they, when they play with it. Oh, it yeah. bounces a little and stuff, but I mean, it would be good to have that once. Options. Okay. We'll see what we have for zoning public hearings, and then either put that on either December, or January, depending. And what Tracy does not want. Exactly. And see, yeah, to see how far it's updated because of the new. When does the new lidar start to go on there? Is that not till? I have while to yet. The deliverables for the 2025 lidar. I have to look at the flight plan. And when that will, do you happen to recall that, Eric? Is that, that's usually no. mid-year, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Or the imagery. The, the ortho imagery, the three-inch ortho imagery coming next year. Oh, yeah, that one be too. Yeah. The three we'll fly this next yeah. three year. So it's the next, We're so the next it's month. their budget year goes, it goes by the state or the federal, doesn't it? So it's October. Mm -hmm. It'll be good when we get it. But fun? the recent data is, is loaded. We do have our most recent yeah, imagery out there. Uh, from, I wasn't, it was it 2020, 2020 or 2020? Yeah, that was because they, it got stuck out an extra year or something, whatever, before it came. Uh, yeah, we just, we had it. paid for it. Yeah. yeah. That okay. was why and then you get it. Uh, okay. Chair okay. O'Connell, I have a couple of just talking points regarding the work plan. Sure. So we're pretty committed to do the LWRD stewardship award recognition so we've got that on the December agenda I'm thinking now that because you know we do that award presentation and then we go uh, visit with the, the award winners I'm wondering if we shouldn't move that undeveloped lake study report to January 
Um, otherwise, the only other option would be to have that undeveloped lake study report before the stewardship award. Then our staff can do that report. Then we can we could roll into the stewardship award, and then we can be gone from the meeting and do the photo ops and. Oh, I see. Okay. After after that award. Well, that's that might be better just to have it in January too. That yeah. just the agenda was getting a little bit full too yeah. as we talked. So we're okay pushing it to January okay. if you are. Yeah, yeah, that should be all right. Okay. And maybe that beacon. Um, I'm gonna bite Mr. Olson to that one. Yeah, maybe that That'd beacon be, thing in January too. The president is far too busy. I know he's pretty busy, but I'll still bite him. Maybe, maybe it'll be enough time for him to get on his schedule. <laughs> I don't know, two months ahead, I don't know. I was going to mention that too. Um, it would be good to invite him if he's available. Yeah. That was, yeah. His, it was his push. Resolution. His election in December. He's up for an invite. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's up for re-election in December. Mm -hmm. At least force him to zone in. Anybody run against him? I don't know. It usually is. All right, and then the tree replacement, all that stuff from the... That'll be, that's his normal stuff will come through, won't it then? Nortech, we haven't had an update for a while. Who's on that now? Is that Doug? Is Doug Johnson still on that or? I thought so, Doug is. I haven't seen him, I thought he might be sick or something. Yeah, he's still on that. Was he here yesterday? Okay. Oh, he's on the trail stuff, that's it's why. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, that's uh, that's okay. Beacon right there too. Just all the forest annual plan we did last year, so that's good. The tax deed listing stuff. Do we? Interesting. Is that anything happened there yet on that Act Two Sixteen? Is that just kind of Act Two Sixteen? Is that the Act Two O Seven? Oh. The tax deed property. Yeah, and Two Sixteen isn't it both or what? Uh, they're still working Change with WCA it. on finalizing um, the implications and. If the counties need to adopt another ordinance on how that gets implemented, so we're still back finding out. Yeah, that's kind of a mess, isn't we it? They do have an they do have an ordinance template, um, and and we'll uh, we'll just see if it's ordinance right. update. Let's read it once and tell them to shove it. It's a five year deal. It's terrible. Still, still the state state really, really nailed us on that. <laughs> okay. okay, so that's how I feel about that one. <laughs> really? I didn't know. I didn't, didn't know. know. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. It's in <laughs> Any speech? All right. So then all the other stuff. Now it's just that uh that that uh trail one. December that open house. Oh is the, that the same day as our meeting too? The outdoor rec plan? Yeah. Um yep, that's on December uh Third. December 3rd at uh, the public hearing is set for December 3rd at 5 p.m. So it's on the two. It's the day before our meeting. Yes. Okay. Yep. At 5 p.m. Public, yeah. public works, uh, public safety, public works committee will start at 4:30. Oh, the yeah. public hearing will be, commence at 5, mm -hmm. followed by anything. So it's a public. night one. Okay. Is that going to be here? Yes. In this room. Okay. Give more people a chance to attend. Sure. All right. Are we pretty good for now? No. Hmm? Oh, All right. Memo. Uh, litigation update? Any? None? None. <laughs> Hard to believe. Um, be good you did. You should put litigation D in the Then that would know it be nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion we adjourn. Oh. I'll second that. Oh, so there's a second. Oh, my. All those in favor, sir. Yes. We are adjourned. Um, well, I